It's time to go to London. Our Chicago Bears will be taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars in London at 8.30 a.m. Chicago time this Sunday. Who's going to win this matchup? Watch this video to hear my thoughts. What's going on, guys? I'm back with our Chicago Bears pregame prediction video, which I'll be doing before every single Bears game this year. And it's already week six. This is our last game before our bye week. So... The season is going by pretty fast, guys. Like, it makes me kind of sad because I look forward to the NFL season so much. I wait for so long, and then it goes by in a flash. So enjoy every single week while you can, guys, because there's nothing like football season. But talking about this game, guys, okay, our Chicago Bears will be traveling to London across the pond to take on the Jaguars. And they left on Monday night, I believe. The Chicago Bears left on Monday night, so they had basically the whole week to adjust to the time change, get their body clocks completely reset, which is a big deal in my opinion, okay? We saw what happened the last time we played in London. Matt Nagy chose to fly in, I believe, Thursday night before the game, which was a terrible idea. We started out so poorly. We did a little bit better as the game progressed, but you could tell our guys were not ready to play that game, so... I think it makes a lot more sense to have flown in, you know, this early and to get our guys the adequate rest and recovery time they need to have themselves ready for this football game. And the Chicago Bears are coming off a winning streak. Okay, we've won two in a row now. And this is technically a home game for us in London, although it's not in Chicago, obviously. So I don't consider it as a home game. But the Bears have won eight straight games at home. So... I kind of wonder if we win this game, if it would count towards our home winning streak. I think it would in the official stats and the official record books, but us Bears fans don't really consider that as a home game, obviously, but there should be a lot of Bears fans in London, okay? There are a lot of Bears fans all over the world. I know a lot of you guys probably watching my channel are fans from London, from you know countries overseas, which we appreciate your support a lot. So if any of you guys are going to this game, man, be loud, be proud, you know, yell the entire game and, you know, make sure you don't have a voice after you leave this game, okay? Hopefully it's going to be a lot of fun for you guys attending this game. And talking about the Jaguars, guys, they finally won a game. They won their first game of the season against the Colts last week. And Trevor Lawrence looked a lot better. I'll talk about him in a little bit, but the offense looked a lot better. The defense still was terrible, but the team finally won a game, okay? So, you know, it's it's not a good Jaguars team by any means. Like they're one and four, which is not a good record. Doug Peterson is on the hot seat for sure. But we cannot take this team lightly. It's not gonna be like a gimme win by any means. No win in the NFL is a gimme. You have to earn and fight each victory and be ready to play each football game. So I hope that Matt Eberflus is not treating this game as a easy type of game entering it because the Bears are the better football team on paper and should be expected to win this game. But Talking about the Jaguars, guys, we'll be breaking down both sides of the football for them, starting with their offense, first of all. They rank number 21 in points score per game, number 15 in yards gain per game, number 20 passing attack, and number 11 run game. And their passing offense has really struggled the entire season, except for last game, Trevor Lawrence did look a lot better. He had his best performance of the season. So far, Trevor Lawrence has 1,100 passing yards, six passing touchdowns, two interceptions, completion percentage of 59%. And... You know, T-Law is a guy that is super talented. I mean, he can make any throw in the book, but he also has some just sometimes boneheaded types of plays, which you don't always expect out of a number one overall pick generational type of quarterback. Like, I don't think he's lived up to the generational label by any means, but he still is a pretty good quarterback at his best. And he's a guy that can run the offense really well. He's a guy that can stay calm in the pocket, make some accurate throws down the field. So you definitely have to keep an eye out on Trevor Lawrence potentially having good back-to-back -back games, but we know the Bears defense is super talented. So, you know, it's going to be hard for Trevor Lawrence to make that happen. I'm talking about their weapons though on this team. So Brian Thomas Jr. has been the best weapon on this team without a doubt. He stretched the field. He's made multiple big time catchers for T-Law. He has um, the most yards on the team right now, receiving yards, which for a rookie, that's pretty damn good. They signed Gabe Davis over the offseason, but he has been a massive disappointment in Buffalo. He is more of a one trick pony in Buffalo. I feel like, like he could make a 50 yard catch down the field, but not very much besides that. And so far in in Jacksonville, he has struggled mightily with drops, with bad route running, with just poor effort sometimes on plays. So, you know, he's been a major disappointment. They also got um, Christian Kirk, obviously, who they gave that contract to a couple years ago. And he's been a solid weapon for them, but only has 
um, 257 yards on the season, which, you know, pretty decent production, but you know, nothing over the top, obviously. I mean, overall, this passing offense has not been good if you compare it to other passing offenses in the NFL. But talking about the run game, they have been pretty good there, okay? They're one of the most efficient run games in all of football. Tank Bigsby is averaging eight yards per carry, okay? He has 273 rushing yards. He also got Trevor Etienne, or Travis Etienne. I'm sorry, that's his younger brother, Trevor Etienne. But Travis Etienne has 231 yards on the ground. He's averaging 4.4 yards per carry. He's more of a receiving threat. Also, out of the backfield, he's on my fantasy team. And so far, he's been kind of disappointing, but only because Tank Bigsby is eating into his production. So, sucks for my fantasy team, but obviously the Jaguars don't care about my fantasy team. Overall, this has been a very strong run game. The run blocking has been pretty good and you know this will be the strength of the Jaguars offense if they win this game if they score a lot of points it's probably going to be because they ran the football really well one thing they don't do very well though is score touchdowns in the red zone they're one of the worst red zone offenses in all football they only score a touchdown 44 percent of the time in the red zone which ranks bottom 10 in the NFL the play calling down there has been pretty poor I've seen Jaguars fans complain about press Taylor's play calling there um, on, on the third and shorts, fourth and shorts, and also at the you know, in the red zone too. Like it's not been good. So, you know, hopefully the Bears can keep this team out of the red zone. Switching over to the Jaguars defense, they rank number 30 in points allowed per game, number 31 in yards allowed per game, number 32 pass defense, number eight run defense. And you can see by the numbers, they have a very poor secondary, one of the worst secondaries in all of football at this point. They're averaging, they're allowing, excuse me, 7.3 yards per pass attempt, which is one of the worst in football. I mean, they're lying big chunk explosive plays back to back to back. They're just very undisciplined back there. It seems like they don't have much of a, you know, plan back there sometimes. And guys are out of place constantly. Guys are not making their tackles. If you look at their depth chart, it's not full of very good players. Okay. Their secondary consists of uh, Monterich Brown, who's been, you know, solid at times. Andre Sisco, Antonio Johnson, Ronald Darby, and Jerry and Jones as a nickel cornerback, which these are not household names. Like there's, you know, some guys with potential, but there's not superstars in the secondary. So this should be a secondary. The Bears offense can pass the football down the field against. Now where their strength is on this defense is probably in the front seven. They do have some talented players there in the front seven, most notably Joshua Hines Allen. Used to be Josh Allen's changed his name to Joshua Hines Allen and he has 19 pressures on the year. So he has been pretty productive in terms of, you know, getting pressure on the quarterback. He, you know, has that high end athleticism too. So he's a guy definitely to watch out for in this game. Trayvon Walker has been mostly a disappointment, but he also has raw physical tools that occasionally do come to light. And, you know, every once in a while, he can get a pressure, can get a sack. Um, they also added Eric Armstead from the 49ers, who's been really good in terms of run defense, has not done so much as a pass rusher just yet, but definitely a talented football player. And if you look at their linebackers, man, Devin Lloyd is having one of the best years for any linebacker in football so far. He's been extremely productive. He's been very good in terms of run defense obviously so you know this, this team has a very good run defense like it might be hard to run the football against this team with the talent they have on the defensive line in the front seven and the bears have already struggled to run the football so kind of worried about how the bears get this ground game going you know but at least through the air i hope they will be able to score and move the ball because this is not a very good jaguars pass defense now guys if you want to place wagers on nfl action this season maybe on the chicago bears winning a game maybe on caleb williams you know winning rookie of the year or whatever my bookie is the best place to place those wagers they are the sponsor of today's video and if you guys want to sign up i have a promo code it's windy city there's a link down below to sign up and get started but it actually doubles your first deposit up to a thousand bucks so pretty cool promotion to take advantage of if you're new to betting or if you're new to my bookie okay to get a good start to your bankroll and they have a bunch of different betting options money line you know, straight bets, parlays, you know, whatever you can think of, they probably have on their website. They also have a loyalty program, which is pretty cool. It's called MyBookie Plus, where the more you play, the more rewards you earn. So they, they take care of you if you do bet with them, you know, pretty frequently. And they also have something called risk-free boost on Thursdays, where you can bet without a sweat. If your bet hits, you win some money. If it doesn't hit, you get your uh, wager refunded. So 
you know, pretty cool promotions they have on their website. Bet on anything, anytime, anywhere using my bookie, the sports book that gives you control and rewards every time you play. Switching over to the Bears offense, they rank number 16 in points score per game, number 26 in yards gain per game, number 22 passing attack, and number 29 run game. And this entire Bears offense has been so much better the past couple weeks. Caleb Williams is really starting to break out and show everybody why he was the top pick in the NFL draft. He has 1,091 yards, passing yards on the season so far. Five passing touchdowns, four interceptions. And the last two games, man, he's been very, very good for the most part. Last game, he had 300 plus passing yards, two passing touchdowns, no interceptions. Before that, he also had no interceptions. So I like that Caleb is not turning the ball over as much as he was earlier in the season, which that is growth right there. Like he's making smarter throws. He's more accurate with the football down the field. Last game, he had multiple down the field throws. Uh, three throws of over 20 yards in that game. He connected with DJ Moore on a deep bomb in the end zone for, I think it was like almost 38, 40 yards or something like that. So Caleb is really starting to grow and show Bears fans why we should be excited about him. And the scary part is, is that he's not even close to as good as he can be in this league. He's not really making the out of structure plays so far that he made in college football. Everything has mostly been in structure from the pocket, which is good, obviously, but I also want to see some out of structure playmaking ability because that's what makes him so special and so different, okay? The ability to side armor pass while he's on the run or, you know, escape a bunch of sacks and then somehow find somebody open down the field. Like, he's done a little bit of that so far, but not as much as he did in college football. So maybe we see the out-of-structure playmaking ability also, you know, come pretty soon to Caleb in the NFL. But talking about the offensive line, I do want to, you know, talk about them as well because they have been a major reason why Caleb has been able to break out the last couple of games. They were really good the last game, allowed only one sack, I believe. Um, Caleb had a lot of time in the pocket the last game. We had backups come in, Matt Pryor and Bill Murray at guard, and both of them were very good in that game. Like, they actually performed at a very high level, better than even Tevin Jenkins and Nate Davis have at points this season. Now, it's a very small sample size, and the Panthers' defense was really bad, so I'm not saying these guys are going to be this good the entire season, but I'm happy to see signs of life on the Bears' offensive line. They're picking up stunts a lot better. Caleb is also helping them out a lot more, making adjustments at the line of scrimmage, not holding on to the football for too, too long, and just, you know, throwing the ball away when applicable, right? Like, he's not trying to be a hero for too long, usually, so... You know, good to see the Bears passing offense really start to emerge. And, you know, talking about the run game, I do want to talk about DeAndre Swift, too, because he has really started to emerge as well in this offense. Okay, DeAndre Swift in the last two games has 166 rushing yards and 119 receiving yards. He has been one of the best backs in football the last couple of weeks. He's given the Bears exactly what they wanted out of him in the last two weeks. The ability to catch the ball out of the backfield, make plays after the catch, you know, juke guys in the open field, be evasive in the open field. That is DeAndre Swift's game. His game is not breaking tackles on these inside runs. Like, he's just not a guy that gets, you know, physical yards like that. But he is a very elusive and hard to tackle back when you do get him out in space and when you do have the proper blocking for him to take advantage of. So really happy for DeAndre Swift that he's turned it around. Hopefully he can keep it going against the Jaguars' tough run defense. And then lastly, talking about the Bears' defense, they rank number five in points allowed per game, number seven in yards allowed per game, number six passing defense, number 18 run defense. Firmly a top five defense, in my opinion, at this point in the NFL season, aside from the run defense. The run defense has been, you know, mediocre at times, but... I feel like that's also because teams have only really been able to run the football against this defense. They have not been able to pass it at all. So they're trying to run it a lot more than they are trying to pass it. And the Bears occasionally have slipped up in terms of tackling or, you know, playing their gaps correctly in terms of the run defense. But the pass defense has been very, very solid, okay? Jaquan Brisker is not going to be playing in this game. He suffered a concussion in the last game when he absolutely knocked the shit out of Tommy Tremble. So kind of sucks we're missing our star safety back there. Maybe not star, but like really good safety, right? Like Jaquan Brisco has been very, very good this year. So tough to lose him. But Jonathan Owens, uh, Simone Biles' husband, will be playing in this game. And he's also had some really good plays this season. He scored the Bears' first touchdown of the year in that Titans game on special teams. So hopefully Jonathan Owens can at least hold his own back there. I'm not expecting him to be as good of a tackler as Brisker or 
you know, as good in coverage as Brisker, but he does have at least the ability to be an average player, I feel like, in the secondary, um, combined with the great pass rush that we have. And talking about that pass rush, guys, I mean, we have the 11th most sacks in the NFL, which for a Bears defense said, you know, just a year ago, actually ranked pretty low in terms of total sack production, which is because the first half of the season last year, we had like no sacks at all. When we traded for Montez Sweat, we finally got some sacks, but still last year we ranked bottom 10 in sack production. The year prior, we ranked dead last in sack production. Now we rank number 11, which is, you know, just a testament to how the Bears have built this defensive line. It was a process, obviously, but they have developed multiple guys that are playing really well on this defensive line. Javon Dexter keeps on having good games. Andrew Billings keeps on having very good games. So the interior pass rush is really, really good, but also on the outside, you know, Daryl Taylor has been a fantastic pickup. Montez Sweat is still pretty good, even though he's been fairly quiet in terms of sack production. I feel like he is kind of enabling, you know, other guys like Daryl Taylor to thrive because they're paying more attention to Montez Sweat probably. So overall, a very good defense. They have allowed 21 or less points in 11 straight games at this point, which is very damn impressive. I mean, to be this good for so long is just something worth, you know, celebrating, right? Like the Spears defense has returned to being one of the elites in the NFL, which I absolutely love to see. Let me get to my three keys to Bears victory now. How can the Chicago Bears win this game? And key number one is going to be to get Trevor Lawrence uncomfortable early in this game. I want to see the blitzes, the pass rush going very early in this game because Trevor Lawrence is a quarterback that, again, occasionally can't make the bone-hitted type of play where he's trying to just do too much with the pressure coming his way and thinking he can be a hero when there's no play to be made really by the quarterback. Like, he has suffered some you know, kind of stupid interceptions that way in prior seasons. Not so much this year. He only has two interceptions on the year. But if you look at his tape, like there are some moments where the pressure really does get to him. So I want the pressure to be in his face the entire afternoon. Well, morning for our Chicago Bears fans. But I want the pressure to be there the entire game. Key number two is going to be to test these defensive backs down the field. I see no reason to stop throwing the ball deep down the field in this game. Uh, Shane Waldron had a fantastic game plan in the last game. The route concepts, the route combinations were really good stretching the field. So I want to see more of that. I want to see DJ Moore being able to be used as a deep threat, but also in the middle of the field. He has the ability to make defenders miss in the open field. So I want to see you know DJ Moore continue to get the ball. I want to see Rome Adumsley also make plays for this team. And Keenan Allen too. Obviously, it's going to be impossible for everybody to have 100 plus yards because we have so many damn weapons on this team. But I do want to see Caleb trying to spread the ball out and letting everybody eat on this offense down the field. And the finally key number three is going to be to not overthink it in the red zone if you are Shane Waldron. The Bears have had some boneheaded types of play calls in the red zone so far this season. It's been much better the last two games. I think Shane Waldron is really starting to calm down and like get back to the roots of what you know, can make an offense so good, okay, especially with the fullback thing he's been doing with Doug Kramer. I've really loved seeing that. Last game, Doug Kramer did have a chop chopping penalty, which, you know, that was kind of stupid of Doug Kramer. But overall, like, the Doug Kramer fullback experiment has been working pretty well. So when you are at the goal line, at the five-yard line, two-yard line, one-yard line, whatever, keep on using Doug Kramer as a fullback. Keep on giving the ball to Roshan Johnson. Last game, we had DeAndre Swift get some carries at the goal line, which I'm okay with, but... I would prefer, you know, Roshan to be getting those carries because he is a more powerful back, in my opinion. He has more of the ability to, you know, push through defenders with the bigger frame that he has too. So just like don't overthink it when you get there. No more speed options at the one yard line. No more trying to be too cute. Stick to what works on this offense. And finally, it's time for my score prediction. Who do I have win this matchup? And guys, I have the Chicago Bears going into London. Beating the Jaguars by a score of 27 to 20 to go to 4 and 2 on the season. So I do have it being a relatively close game. I'm going to give the Jaguars a little bit more respect than their record has shown because they do have some level of talent, right? Like they do have Trevor Lawrence, a pretty talented quarterback. They do have some pieces on this offense that should be good enough to keep this game from being a blowout. Do I think a blowout is possible? Yeah, but I'm not going to predict it just because I don't want to jinx things. I don't want to be too, too confident in this team until they prove they can, you know, sustain this level of offense every single game. Talking about the Chicago Bears, right? Like if they can score 30 plus points again in this game, I would be beyond impressed. And it is possible again because the Jaguars don't have a good defense. So 
you know, I really want to pick the Bears to score 30 plus points, but I just got to like tame my expectations until I see it consistently. Um, but hopefully it happens, right? But, you know, I, I do think our, you know, the main struggle we could have in this game is probably running the football, right? The Jaguars do have a pretty good run defense. We have had a good running game the last two games, but against an elite team like the Jaguars, elite defensive line in terms of stopping the run, we could run into some issues. So that's why I'm not predicting the Bears to score 30 plus points. But, you know, with the passing defense the Jaguars have, it is going to be possible. Now, I do think Trevor Lawrence throws a couple picks in this game because the Bears defense is so good at forcing those turnovers. And I think we get a lot of pressure on the quarterback in this game. So my offense MVP is going to be Caleb Williams again I think Caleb is going to have a very spectacular game hopefully pass for 300 plus passing yards let's predict two passing touchdowns and I'll predict one INT just to be you know a little bit realistic because every quarterback eventually is going to be throwing some picks he's not going to be throwing zero interceptions every single game so I'll predict two passing touchdowns one interception and 300 plus passing yards as for my defense MVP I'm going to be going with Daryl Taylor okay a pretty random pick obviously but Daryl Taylor somehow has been a beast this entire season he has one of the best pass rush win rates in the entire NFL so I think he's gonna have a sack on Trevor Lawrence and also a forced fumble leave a comment down below guys what do you guys think is gonna happen in this game leave your score predictions down below and let me know if you guys are going to this game I hope you guys have a lot of fun and see a Bears victory overseas and Man, if the Bears do actually win this game to go to 4-2 and two on the season, they would have a pretty strong chance at making the playoffs. Now, all of our tough games are down the stretch, so I'm not going to say it's it's very, very likely we make the playoffs, even if we do win this game, but it would definitely help a lot. So, you know, hopefully the Bears win this game. Leave your comments down below. As always, bear down.